started streaming. All right. Once it loads up on uh, my laptop next to me, then we'll uh, give it a go. It still says we're offline. We're probably online. It's probably lying to us. Oh, it says starting right now. It's receiving it. All right, alive. Okay. All right, so I'll do uh, going for what are we at right now? Twenty seconds. All right, so test, 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 test. How's that sound? All right, awesome. Uh, we could talk about Call of Duty. That's the trailer. Okay. Oh, the trailer? Right. Oh, it was that was horrible. Well, this is from like the the video I sent you is from Call of Duty, like their official YouTube channel. All right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Is this right? No, no, that's good.
Yeah. Oh man, that was, that was awesome. I'm really glad that we're able to do this again. We've had a lot of things come up. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I did. I um I I saw that like wasn't there something that happened where there was like a different trailer and it got just a tremendous amount of dislikes and then they came out with and then they came out with this World War Two trailer. I don't know. I thought I thought Right. Okay, so that that's okay, so that's what I was that's what I was seeing. But um um but either way, this new trailer um I mean, I think it looks awesome to be honest with you. Um I so I guess I haven't bought a Call of Duty game since Ghost, and I only bought that because I bought the PS4 And I didn't really have any games for it when I first bought the PS4. So I bought Ghost and I just didn't like it. Um, but I'm excited about this because um, like the World War, the World War style Call of Duty games are my favorite. Um, and World War II is just such an iconic part of history. You know, like being the, the largest land, sea and air um, strikes uh, on D-Day ever. Um, is like that operation was just so incredible for American history to be able to like replay that. I'm just super excited for not to mention that like uh, band of brothers is one of my favorite TV shows. And that takes place in world war two. That's an HBO series. Yep. Um, and so it's just like the hype for this is actually going to get me back into call of duty, which um, is, was their plan um, is to get old, old gamers, that used to play Call of Duty, I suppose, like me, kind of re-energized. So to answer your question in a, in a long-winded way, yes. Yeah, and I, I I agree with you on that. Um, The one thing that kind of pisses me off is that they're, I feel like they're just doing this as, as a hold-off until next year when they're just going to release Call of Duty, you know, Call of Duty on an alien planet. <laughs> I mean, right. honestly, you know, I it's, yeah. it's, they, if you've, you know, I've kept, I've kept up with all the Call of Duties. I've played every one except, I didn't play Infinite Warfare. Um, just because, not just because I was not interested, it was, there was things I'd rather spend the money on. And I was right. kind of just waiting for Modern Warfare Remastered to be uh, released as a standalone, which it is going to be released as a standalone. Um, I think it's too late because um, I'm just going to wait till if they do release Modern Warfare Remastered too. That just they 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 miss my boat on that. But th if you if you watch them and if you, if you've ever seen any of the interviews with any of the developers, they have this plan, and I don't think Call of Duty World War II was in their plan. 
Um, I think they were really excited about Infinite Warfare because honestly, I've I've watched every DLC for the zombies. I've I've seen every single one completed, and they're awesome. They're incredible zombie experiences. They're definitely yeah. different, but they're they they hold their own. Um, they're definitely not the original story, but they hold their own on on its own. So that's really good, but. I just feel like they had this plan with Infinite Warfare and they were going to move on to something else after this. And then right when they put out that reveal trailer, like you were saying, and it got those crazy dislikes and people were pretty much just saying, why can't we get an old Call of Duty? Why can't we get a World at War Call of Duty? This is it. And, and um, that's why I think they didn't name it Call of Duty World at War 2. Because right. if they named it that, that's essentially them saying we screwed up. Um, well, and 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 I I sorry, I'm not to cut you off. I, yeah, yeah. I just uh, um, I don't. I would I would so much more appreciate if companies just and and I know that we're getting into Valve next, and so this is yep. kind of like a mini segue, I suppose. Yep. But I, I just wish companies would take more. Um, you know, like. They, they would accept their faults and just kind of say, all right, you know what? We thought that this is the direction that we were going to take this franchise. Clearly, we, we were missing the mark here. And so we're listening to our consumers who are the ones that are actually going to buy our product and make us money. Yeah. And we're listening to them and producing a game that you want. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe this is their like subconscious way of doing it. Um, but I agree with you, like not issuing some sort of like statement or something, um, I think would actually be better for the franchise if they did yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that they ever will. I just no. think it'll be, um, look, look at our genius. Uh, <laughs> you know, like we, we, we had this planned all along. Yeah. It's um, like, it's like, dude, you, you picked it up from YouTube commenters, you know, it's like, and in the one thing that they, yeah, they're listening to their fans because they they're releasing this game, but. I think in the in the other thing with DLC five being released for Call of Duty Black Ops three, I think that is going to give them the extra money so that they don't do these crazy microtransactions in World War two. I don't want to see weapon skins. I don't want to. I mean, weapon skins are fine if they're relative to the area. I just don't want to see someone running down Normandy with a a pink laser rifle. <laughs> you know like that's just all i i can picture it i can picture it now everyone getting it it's this crazy gritty shooter and then and then multiplayer's just people running around in hello kitty backpacks and you know four 420 guns shooting weed leaves it's like it's <laughs> it's these games go really crazy but um, i mean i mean i i the custom the custom ability of um you know your your weapons and things like that um, is is some of like, and I, I think I mentioned this on our on our last show. Um, like Rainbow Six Vegas Two is yeah. one of my favorite shooters, yep. simply because of how deep the customization goes, and yep. that really makes the game personal for everybody. So I guess like you know I I understand uh, like kind of what you're saying, but I just I am really looking forward to. Kind of like reliving those scenes. Yeah. Uh, I think like if if multiplayer battles start with like like the big uh, transport ships coming in, crashing onto the shores. Yeah. And then like we're sprinting up and, and trying to like push forth, and there's people being there's people being airdropped, and you don't know where you're gonna land and all that stuff. If yeah. that's how the multiplayer is, that'll feel very like battlefield like, and I think that would be awesome. That would be yeah. so so cool. A, um, a battlefield feeling but not 20 minutes to run to an objective and be killed oh my god yes yeah, no, it's going to be a, a fast-paced battlefield and i think that i think that will be exciting and i think both of us can can say like just concluding this this topic for call of duty i think we can both say that we we liked world at war and we're excited because now we have the graphical limitations that's needed you know what I mean? In in the tools that are needed yeah. to make the game World at War, but twenty times better. And they made a World at War, so they can do it. Let's just see if they can bring it. What is it? In ten years? 
You right. know, let's see if they can bring it back. Right. All right. So let's go into the next topic. Steam's new stats page reveals huge number of refund requests. As of late, Steam has seen about 7,500 support requests per day, the majority of which are for refunds. Um, so let me zoom in on this graph. And because this graph is incredible with what it actually tells you. So the blue line here is uh, submitted requests to Valve. Um, and so you have the blue line that you can see it goes over 100,000 uh, March 23rd. It's over 100,000 submitted responses. Um, and you can see with the red line how quickly they can respond to all of the submitted requests. Um, so essentially what they're just trying to say to us is, you know, hey, look at we have this refund policy in place, it's working, and we are responding to people faster than ever. That's essentially what they're trying to get across with, with the numbers they're putting out. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the, this, this graph, and, um, you know, while they're fairly, it's fairly startling. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, I mean, I mean, how many users are on? How many users are on Steam? You know, millions, like, is that, is that millions. A, is that, okay, okay. So that, I mean, that's still a fairly small. Uh, well, let's I see. Don't know. It's still, it's still what, like almost a tenth. Well, that would only be if it was a million people. But um, Steam user depending count. On how, uh, let's see. At let's see, about an hour ago, there was twelve million people signed into Steam. That's according to Steam. 12 million okay. people about an hour ago. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that's it is a low number, but it's still up there. That's still a ton of people submitting requests and a ton of people. But it's also a ton of people that have gotten responses really fast. Which is, um, I think they said that their longest uh, in the last two months it has taken them to respond to someone was... 33 hours which that's wow. pretty good for a company that big to say hey yeah, we can so we can get to all of our customers right so that's about um what like point point six percent uh 12 million what is it 12 million let's see oh no wait yeah, so if we did... 12 million divided by, what, 100,000 users? Seventy-five. Or, yeah. It'd be 75,000 people divided by their 12 million users. So that's less than... That's less than 1%, right? Um... Well, I mean, if we're doing like, because the reason I'm I, I'm bringing that up is only because, like, that number might not seem like all too daunting. Yeah. If, um, it, you know, if there's a ton of people out there, right? But um, I, I know I've always thought this about Steam too. It's like, if you're gonna buy a game online, um, and the, there's so many transactions happening, you know, there there has to be some sort of return policy, um. Because, you know, if you, if you go in and buy a physical copy and you don't like it within like two weeks or whatever, then you can come and return it. Um, and so uh, having that peace of mind, I think, benefits the consumer and anything that really yeah. benefits the consumer for the long run, I'm totally for. Uh, I would like to see what percentage like GameStop, for example, takes in uh, on daily requests for, um, you know, taking back games. And and that those numbers would be interesting to me to see too, because if Valve's yeah. customer service is 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 so great, and you you know that when I buy a game, I know that if I don't like this, I'm going to yeah. receive my money back within the most 36 hours. Now yeah. all of a sudden, my pockets just got a little deeper because yeah. I'm just going to start buying games and playing them and seeing yeah. if I like them. And then if I 
And if I like them, great. But if I don't, and that's also going to encourage me to buy more obscure titles from you as well. You know, titles that I might be taking a gamble on to buy. Um, and then there's also no hassle of having to drive to the store and return the game. Yeah. It's just one click and you return it. So I, I, I think that that's fantastic. Um, and having this transparency for a company, I know that like Valve gets gets some uh, heat sometimes for yeah. for uh, not being you know, not... transparent. Right. Yeah. And so this this transparency, I think, is amazing. I think it's I enough love when companies are like this. It's enough to set people back a little bit. Um, I just looked up the percentage. So if there's 12 million people online, which means that there's way more people that exist on Steam. Um, say if there's 12 right. million people and 100,000 people decide they want a refund. That's 0.00083% of Steam users. <laughs> but because they're such a big company, those numbers of 100,000, it's proving that they're getting they're getting a ton, but you have to think GameStop's probably not serving 12 million people a day and <laughs> selling one thing to them because then GameStop wouldn't be going out of business. Um, right. and yeah, like you said, I think it is, I think it's a great step for Valve, um, with being, they, they're not really transparent about some things and banning of CSGO players and then saying, you know, in the whole, uh, you know, a CSGO player that was banned, KQLY just joined a, uh, another professional team in this, it's been like two years and now people are losing it and Valve's like, uh, he just still can't play in majors. It's like, it's like, well, explain something. You know, it's like they're transparent about a few things, but not. But I think what's really good about this is its numbers. It's numbers and it's lost numbers. It's not numbers saying, hey, look how great we're doing. But it is a humble brag. It is a humble brag saying, because what we just did was we said, okay, there's 100,000 people on the peak. You know, that's a ton of people getting refunds. We looked up how many people were on Steam, did the math, and said, holy crap, that's really not that much. <laughs> so right. it, it's it's a thing where it shows the consumer that they're willing to be transparent, but it's also a humble brag kind of saying, look at how much sales we can do and look at how much customer service we can also provide. So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. if I was Valve, I would be releasing these numbers um, saying – Hey, you know what? You you can feel comfortable with us in that uh you know, we respond to you in almost 2 hours. Yeah. You know, less less than 2 hours and we'll we'll get to your refund. Yeah. Um and and you know like when you when you think about it, let's say let's say you bought a game from GameStop, right? And then my GameStop is 15 minutes from me. So I go ahead and and get in the car, drive to GameStop. Most of the time it's busy. I'm waiting in line, walking around the store, doing my thing or whatever. By the time I get home, I mean, you're talking at least a little over an hour. So yeah. these, I mean, they're responding to you in about the same time it would take you to go ahead and do, uh, you know, like dedicate your time yeah. to something. And with this, you could be doing whatever you want to do. So um, having that digital copy has always kind of scared me a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, it's like, all right, I don't know what, know what I'm going to do with this. But, ha but seeing this, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this if I don't like it. But seeing these, you know, numbers like this actually gives me – as a consumer, a lot of peace of mind. So that's pretty yeah. great. Yeah, I think I think what it's definitively telling people is, and and that's that's the other thing that they're combating is essentially demos. Demos don't need to exist today for games because on Steam you get the two hours to play the game, and if once you go over that two hour mark, they can't refund you. So you get that two hours, and if in two hours you're sitting there and you're like, this sucks, you immediately if you're under if you're two hours and under that mark. They will immediately give you back that refund. Um, and like you said, going to the store and all that, say if you pick up a game Tuesday after work at 4, right? You go home, you eat dinner or whatever, you, you play it that night, and you say, this sucks. You want to refund it. You're not going to go back that night. It's either closed or you just don't want to go back. So you're going to go back tomorrow after work. By that time, Steam has already refunded you. It's already been 24 right. hours. You've already gotten your refund from Steam, and you didn't have to stop on your way home from work, and you didn't have to waste your time the day before. So right. that's exactly what you're saying. You know what I mean? It's like, 
they they have so many arguments to putting out these numbers, you know, so many reasons to putting out these numbers of saying, look, look, everyone look. So. Yeah, well, you just cleared my other question because I didn't know that it was the two hour mark. Because mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking at the comments on this blog two hours. post. Uh, and people are saying that, you know, like, are, are people requesting refunds after they've played the game? Uh, so most likely well, you're not going to be beating the game in two hours. If um, you send a – and a lot of, uh, like, companies like um, – companies that have games like uh, Firewatch, right, where it only lasts three hours and 30 minutes. Well, that's how long it took me to play it for the first time. Um, and so three hours and 30 minutes – I'm almost done with the story. You know what I mean? I mean, you're not. You're not going to get the ending, unfortunately. I'll tell you right there, and then you're not. But you're going to get most of it. So that's one thing where a lot of, like, Campo Santo and a lot of smaller indie developers that write these story-driven games are opposed to it. But on the other hand, it's... I, I know that Steam, if it's under two hours, they immediately refund you. Um... And if it's over two hours, you get a support. You submit a support ticket, and they take a look. Um, oh, and so, so they can see how long they, how long you've played. If them, you I'm played sure. like two hours and thirty minutes, they're gonna be like, yeah. But if you play right, right, like right. like there was, um, I think for remember No Man's Sky and that whole kerfuffle and that crap. <laughs> what happened was people who had like ninety six hours got refunds. And that's when Steam had to respond and say, like, shit, that should never have happened. You know what I mean? It's like, because if you're going off the one, uh, which a lot of people do, go off the $1 one hour per game, that person just played 96 hours. They just got more than their money's worth, technically, from Hello Games. And then they just got their 60 bucks back. Um, So I I understand it. and, And Valve has had situations where people with these crazy hour numbers get refunds um like i saw with uh, i forget what game it was i think the 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 most hours played on a game that was refunded on steam was over 2000 hours so um is there a chart that kind of says you know it's like like a curve of your hours to the amount of percentage of the amount you paid you'll get back um it, no i mean if you if it's 60 bucks and you play two hours of it and you say i don't want it you get 60 bucks back um and then say if you played 10 hours and you sent in a, a uh a support ticket to get it refunded um and they look it over and they say yeah you're fine um say if it's a game like that takes 100 hours to complete so if they're like yeah we'll we'll give you this exception and they give it to you, you'll get all your money back. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, like, if, if your request gets denied, um, you know, I wonder if Valve could come out with some sort of system that says, okay, well, you played this game for 100 hours, maybe you just don't want it anymore, um, we'll be able to give you, you know, $10 back or or whatever, you know, like yeah. uh, some sort of, you know, store credit. But I guess it's a Which, little different with this. Yeah, because, you it, know, would be, it would be tough because what you'd have to be doing is, revoking a steam title from an account and then what valve is going to of course want to do is be able to resell that key and technically just call it like a used key (laughs) yeah you can't really do that when it's it's digital when it's digital and it it makes it weird and gives this whole scenario where you have developers mad but then you also once the developers get mad and then valve makes you know, the developer's happy, then the consumers are not. And then right. when the consumers are not, the developers are not happy. <laughs> because no one's right. buying their game. And then when the consumer gets happy again, it stays silent. Right. And then that's when it kicks up again. So um, hopefully this is just Valve just saying, hey, look at us. Look at what we can do. You know, right. hopefully. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll finish off with uh, the Xbox chief, Phil Spencer. Just kind of talked here in an article to The Guardian. I'll go up to the top right here, The Guardian. Um, He explained a couple things about Scorpio. He explains uh, how he wants 
a lot of exclusives to come to Xbox, how they're trying to bring more exclusive to Xbox in the coming months. Um, and his big thing that he talks about down here, he talks about big story-driven games. Um, and I will read his quote really quick. It says, you'll have things like Zelda or Horizon Zero Dawn that come out. And they do really well. But they don't have the same impact that they used to have. Because the big service-based games are capturing such a large amount of the audience. Wow, he doesn't, I just realized that he, he doesn't have good grammar when he talks. <laughs> I was like, I, I was fumbling over my words. I was like, why am I fumbling over this? Oh, it's just him talking. Um, Sony's first party studios do a lot of these games and they're good at them. He's pretty much referencing Horizon Zero Dawn again. Um, but outside of that, it's difficult and they're becoming real rare. It's a difficult business decision for those teams. You're fighting into more headway. Um, so he's essentially saying, um, that these big story driven games, and he also explains a little bit lower in the article that for him, it's, it's the idea that these big story games, you could spend 50 million and they make 10, or you could spend 50 million and they make a billion, <laughs> So he's saying, I would rather not take that risk, and I'm just going to, unfortunately, we're going to go the way of the market right now, but we're not, we're not saying no single-player story games. We're just saying our big leading exclusives are not going to be like Horizon Zero Dawn, like Zelda. They're going to be more of a multiplayer RPG, kind of like a Destiny, or a, a multiplayer focus like Overwatch, where I don't even know how to explain Overwatch, but as a genre, but it's a first person, uh, only multiplayer, it's like one of the weirdest games to talk about when you talk about Overwatch as a genre, but that's what he is season his head so what do you what do you think about that quote do you think he's do you think he's going the right way or do you think that he has it all wrong uh i mean you know i think i think when you when you see that quote you can immediately get a little angry because you're like okay thanks for calling out zelda and horizon zero dawn to of my favorite games right now. Like, thanks a lot, dude. Um, you know, like, what are you, what are you trying to say about them? You know? <laughs> um, but you know, I think if you, you know, I, I could see their point. Um, I, I think what the point that he's trying to get to is once you beat Zelda and once you beat horizon zero dawn, once you beat fallout four, um, you know, you don't really go back to it until some time has passed and you're like, Man, I really miss that game. I'm yeah. gonna pop it in and play it again. DLC um, have mods that you hear about, you know, for Fallout and stuff for Skyrim. Like, whenever I hear about a crazy new mod for Skyrim, I'll boot up Skyrim. I'll throw it on, see what it does. Five minutes later, I'm out. Right. Um, and so I think what he's saying is it, uh, that these games are good for a platform to have. You know, there's some people that just don't really have an internet connection mm -hmm. or, or don't have uh, you know, the need to connect to multiple, like hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Um, and yeah. so these single player games are good for the console to have depth. Mm -hmm. But in, in general, having a game that you can constantly come back to, um, like like Overwatch, for example, I know that that's just something that you had thrown out there. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can constantly come back and there's going to be new content. There's going to be new uh, packages, new bundles to unlock, new weapons, new people online to play. And so those yeah. games kind of, one, they give consumers more bang for their buck. Uh, and two, it, it lets the, the developers and like the game consoles, um, they, it allows people like our companies like Xbox to... Uh, like have a stronger base of games for consumers to play. So I kind of see where he where he's coming from. Uh, I think that you know Xbox ever since uh, you know I, we just had to do a whole case study on Microsoft uh, for uh, for school for one of our final presentations, and uh, you know 
since Bill Gates had such a he had such a firm direction on how he was going to take the company, and when he left, they we've had some very boisterous individuals kind of leading different parts of the company and it's got it's gotten them in trouble so um you know coming out and being very blunt and very direct saying you know these games really aren't working uh you know sony studios have a lot of these games and they're good at them but other than that you know it's difficult because they're becoming more rare um you know some of these some of these quotes that he's saying can be really taken out of context um yeah, and also, also, you know, when you have a game like Zelda: Horizon Zero Dawn, now in our, in our, you know, today's day, you're really not playing them alone, right? Because you can live stream them, you can yeah. post on social media of what you're doing, uh, and you know, like the way that P- the PS4's interface at least is set up, uh, everyone's seeing what you're doing, what trophies you're unlocking, so you're kind of never alone playing these games. But I do understand where he's coming from. In a long-winded, <laughs> yeah, in a well, long-winded answer. I, I think what you were saying with with his quote being kind of taken out of context. I think you can immediately when he says, "You have things like Zelda or Horizon Zero Dawn that'll come out and they do really well, but they don't have the same impact." It, I get what he's trying to say. It's what he's trying to say is impact is essentially what you said. It's a game where you play it and you might go back to it a few times after you finished it. But you're not going to go back for seven hours. You know, you're not going to be playing the game for seven hours straight. Um, right. You know, it's not going to be like like you were doing it when you're trying to finish it. Uh, that's what he's saying with impact. But a lot of people were taking this quote as impact in the sense of they don't make money. <laughs> um, you know, and, and a big boss, I get why they're thinking that idea of that's what he's trying to say is, you know, and, and it's, that's what it sounds like. It says they don't have the same impact they used to. You know, it just sounds like we're not making as much money on them as we used to. Um, you know, and that's not what he's saying because he'd be really stupid to essentially say nobody bought Zelda. And it didn't make them money. It's like more people own Zelda for the Switch. Then there are Switch consoles that have been bought, and people own it for the Wii U. A ton of people. I think, like, over 500,000. So right. you're telling me, you know, it, it, when, when I hear people, when I saw that today, when people are saying, why is he saying they don't make money? It's like, he's okay, well, he's not, and I can see why, but he, Phil Spencer's not stupid. Phil Spencer has brought in Xbox essentially back from the grave from that Xbox One reveal oh, when geez. everyone yeah. when everyone lost it. I mean, hey, I'll I'll be honest. I pre-ordered an Xbox One two minutes after that conference. <laughs> um, I pre-ordered it and I uh, I pre-ordered it from my Xbox. I still got that achievement. Um, but I I I knew I knew the second that press conference ended, I was like, none of that is sticking. That's why well, I pre. When, that's why I pre-ordered it because I knew they were gonna three days. The next three days, they were gonna say, "Oh, we uh, we screwed up. We uh, we're gonna knock all that out." And that's Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer is the guy who has pretty much brought them back from the grave. So he's not stupid. He's not gonna say Zelda. It's not gonna make anybody money. He knows right. it's gonna make him. He's gonna be rolling in cash if he makes one of these. But what right. he's trying to say, and what and I think you were trying to say in a long-winded way, was longevity. A game like Zelda, someone will play 180 hours, 200 hours. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time. They'll put all that time in, and they put the game down. And then that's it. Overwatch, there's people who have played over 1,000 hours. And, and the game's only been out for, hasn't been out for a year yet, or has it? Yeah, it's going to be one year anniversary in uh, May 24th, 20 days. So it, it's already hit this insane level of people playing and the hours they've spent, and it hasn't even been out for a year. So that's what I think he's trying to say is they also got people in with the $60 purchase for Overwatch, and then I bought, well, not including my PC purchases, like we just conclude my Xbox purchases. I bought it for Xbox, that's 60 I've bought three $50 loot box things for Xbox, 
two twenty dollars and one ten. That has brought them in more money than like three games if they release three right. games. So right. what that's what he's trying to say is we have an interest in making single player big single player stories. The problem is we don't want to spend all this money and have it not be a hit. And also, we'd rather spend two years working on a title that someone's going to spend four hundred dollars on, right. and and then it's like it, it's like instead of you know when I used to get one game a year from my Nintendo sixty four, kids are buying two hundred dollar video games nowadays. So he knows what he's doing, and I think he has the idea. So what do you right. what do you think based on based on what I said, like my opinion about that? Do you um, think well, I, I have think, any I grounds? Are, yeah, no, I think I think that your opinion is um, very well taken. I think we're both uh, pretty much on the same page here. We're just kind of attacking it from a couple of different angles. Um, I, I think that, you know, you're right. O- Overwatch really hit the nail on the head because if you can get people to love your game and you can get people to just get so engrossed with it, they're like – it's not even you know play to win it's not even you know yeah. this this or pay to win it's not even this this thing of um you know you have to you have to buy these things it's just if you want to buy them they're here otherwise you can earn them if you would like and people are like well i love this game so much i'm just going to keep giving you money yeah and that's the model that i like to see with yeah. games is let us let us love your game so much that we want to give you more money yeah. um you know don't yeah so i, I completely I think, agree with that yeah but just and- just and like you said, it's it's that's a good uh, way to put it. And kind of like people, a lot of Battlefield players think this way, where um, they give them the 60 bucks, they give them the season pass because they know they're going to play 3,000 hours of it. And then when these battle packs came out and when they heard they were only cosmetic, I've never seen a group of people been more rejoiced about m- microtransactions. They're like, oh, great, this is awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh, we can give you more money now? It's like, and... Um, you know, because if you think about it, 3,000 hours, someone plays that on average for Battlefield, you know, an average Battlefield player, they're, they're getting a lot of money essentially off of EA, you know? Well, so. And just just uh, just to wrap, like, you know, kind of last point here, mm-hmm. um, Spencer did follow up on mm-hmm. his comments. Yes. Um, on, you can go to PlayStationLifestyle.net. Uh, you can you can search for this. Uh, it says, you know, Spencer's comments were somehow misconstrued as some people thought he was undermining the success of the aforementioned games and single player experiences as a whole. In response, Spencer took Twitter to clarify that this wasn't what he meant. Quote, Horizon Zero Dawn is great, he remarked. Quote, as an industry, we should want single player to be healthy. Today, as a genre, we see fewer single player games being built. Spencer said he wasn't downplaying anything and laminated those who turn, quote, everything into console wars. Quote, I love single player games. He continued, interesting. Interestingly, he also re- uh, revealed during one exchange that Sony sent him a collector's edition of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Um, so, the, the, in the whole review and the whole, you know, Guardians interview, you can go ahead and see it. This is just a. Uh, what what we're talking about today is literally just a snapshot of the Guardian interview. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's one of those things where you know, man, and I, I've kind of talked about this before um, to some of my colleagues and everything, but you know, you you have to be careful with what you say, with the way that social media is, with yeah. like how kind of trigger happy people can be with things um you know you, you have to be careful with what you say and yeah. the context in which you say it uh the tone in which you say it you know it all that needs to be taken it, taken um uh, into account and and you know what like you're you're the face of xbox you know like you you have to be conscious of these things and you have to be conscious of what you say and i think phil spencer's doing a really good job yeah. in the direction he's taking xbox he actually is making me want to buy an xbox when i swore to myself i was not buying <laughs> any more microsoft products again um but he is what is after definitely your 360 changed. died um yeah you know my, my 360 died i had a pc uh and the customer service experience i had was just 
horrid. The one so I went thing, to the one um, thing people always laugh about. I got an Xbox sitting next to me. Ten years old, has never gotten a red ring, and still run every game pretty silently. That's I've awesome. never had a problem. I've never. I've been so lucky. But you I better been, knock on wood, my friend. I oh, that's an Xbox. If that thing dies today, I don't care. <laughs> if that thing dies today, I don't care. I got my PC. But I mean, it, it's they they were in this pit that he has been able to bring them out of, and I think you said it correctly. He does need to choose his words wisely because you know we're just talking about it. We we know what he's kind of trying to say, but we got like seven different things from what he said in that interview seven different ways that we could be interpreting it. So if you're thinking one thing and I'm thinking one thing, there's millions of people who probably think a thousand different things when he said the word impact. You know, right. they're thinking he's greedy. They're thinking he just wants money. He doesn't care about the players. I mean, that that's what I've been seeing people saying that. Um, you know, and to the people that are just saying, you know, and doubting him, it's like, hey, he essentially has... has you know, Microsoft, They, I think it was right after the launch of the Xbox One, they had a meeting and said, we don't want Xbox to be a part of Microsoft anymore. Can we just let them be their own? And they took to a vote. And before they took to a vote, Phil Spencer was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then they had a lot of talks. He became, you know, they kicked out Mattingly and then they put him in. And it's been fine ever since. And they've been great. So clearly this guy has an idea of what he's doing, but like you said, you got to think about the way you word things, and Microsoft doesn't really have a handle on that. They don't really have right. a handle on what he can say because he is his own person. He's kind of like the, the best way to put it, he's the Palmer Lucky of Xbox. You know, Palmer Lucky was the, uh, the startup for Oculus, he was the beginning of Oculus, and then with the whole lawsuit and everything, and realizing that he stole some equipment, and then, you know, internet stuff came out about him, how he was giving money to, uh, he was giving money to political campaigns, and this and that, so it, it just, it made him, you know, because he, they didn't really control him, they just let him do what he does. The one sure. thing, though, is Phil Spencer has a good head on his shoulders, and he has a team at Microsoft who's kind of just saying he knows what he's doing, and they're taking right. their hands off. So, um, All right. So you want to wrap this up? Yeah, go ahead, man. Start us off. Okay. Let's see. Let me get, uh, let me get out my article. Let's see. All right. So, let me hop over to the web page. There it is. All right. Um, so, we're going to end the show with just a one minute uh, opinion by me and a one minute opinion by Yulu, um, and that's just how we're going to end every show. It's just going to be the final thoughts. Um, so I'm going to just start out with CSGO. Um, I play a ton of CSGO, um, and the one thing that I'm really concerned about right now is the, the small fact that we're having these small, small, small updates, and it is. It's going back and forth from we're super excited, we're not excited, we're super excited, we're not excited. It, half these updates are updates that really they don't need to tell us that they're updating. Um, not that they don't need to tell us that they're updating. It's just, it's things like, oh, sorry, we fixed the HTTP 410 gone code to unsubscribe from log delivery. Uh, delivery. Thanks. Have you fixed dust too in some of the spots you can die on? Not really. You really haven't. And you haven't fixed competitive games. And you have a lot of problems right now with players that you've banned coming back to professional teams and then you having to make a statement saying, hey, they're still banned. We all know they're banned. You made a permanent ban. You kicked out players 
some who had no knowledge in what they were doing, some who had complete knowledge in what they were doing, but still should be able to play professional CSGO, and all you do is release a two-sentence statement about how KQLY is still banned. And then right. we get an update today saying how you fix regression in the CSGO SDK launcher. You haven't changed much. Thanks, Val. All right. I will uh, mute my mic and we can hop on to yours. Okay. So um, my uh, article is from screenbrand.com. Um, and is talking about how Nintendo still doesn't get it when it comes to YouTube. Uh, and this came out, um, this article came out just a little bit ago. Um, and it's talking about how, you know, there's a, there's a paragraph in the middle here. Nintendo's current YouTube policy flags uh, when users have implemented a slice of their property, mostly via music clips and proceeds to claim owners of the video, collecting all ad revenue for as long as the video is up. This has caused most gamers to avoid v reviewing Nintendo games for their channels, resulting in a lot of frustration for creators and new viewers alike. Some YouTubers like Josh Thomas and Joe Vargas and Steve Williams or Boogie2988 have taken to their channels to express their opinions on the matter. Um, and so, you know, this is something when we had did the pilot episode, we had talked about this and it's just so unbelievably frustrating because it's like, it, it's almost like watching a play and you know that this person, you know, like, like the whole entire audience knows what's right for the character on stage, yet they continue to, you know, like go into the wrong rooms or make the wrong decisions and, and things like that. Um, and that's how I feel Nintendo is is really doing their PR and their marketing. I mean, it was it, it was so much better and it was so refreshing to see Nintendo actually have this, um, you know, going on um, going on live TV and going on late night shows and displaying the switch. Um, but like for most companies, that's the minimum. And we got so excited to see Nintendo do this. Uh, and yet they're still flagging videos and they're still, they have this, they have the Nintendo's creator creators program. Now where you can like, you know, go through this whole um, like gauntlet of things um, and, and do the creators program, but they still take a ton of your ad revenue and you're only allowed to do so much. Um, you, you, you still have to like ask them for permission to make videos and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, you get the advertisement revenue, they get 70% for channels and 60% for videos. And that rate can change at any time. So, you know, it's just YouTube or Nintendo just doesn't get it. It's like, you have these big people like PewDiePie and, and Boogie2988 people that are, that are bringing in tens of millions of, of, of views collectively. And that is literally free advertising that you're missing out on. Absolutely free advertising just because people love your product and you refuse to let them do that. And you handcuff your consumers and you don't produce enough product for the consumer base like with the Nintendo Classic and and with like Breath of the Wild, how people weren't weren't able to get them for a little bit of time and 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 you know, same thing with the Switch. And you 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 handcuff your consumer base and it's just so bad. And the reason that we get so worked up about it is because we love Nintendo. I mean, there's a point in time where parents would refer to any game console as the the Nintendo. Oh, are you playing the Nintendo, even though you're playing your Xbox? That is literally free publicity that is worth its weight in gold. And it, it's, it's literally invaluable having people spread the, your product name and you just continue to not let consumers help you out and let consumers drive your sales. And it just drives me nuts. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I really wish that, that Nintendo would, would come around for that because you know they, they, they could honestly take this industry by storm if they wanted to because there's so many people that want to help them. And, you know? and you're you're in you're in the same road as a lot of people, you know, where you have to think that YouTube, you know, if you know how YouTube works, and I'll reveal this, where when you get paid on YouTube, what happens is YouTube takes 50% already. That kind of already sucks, right? 
Yeah. So say if you yeah. make a hundred dollars, you actually made fifty. Now, say if you're a Nintendo, like say if I was two teams Nintendo Let's Plays, I don't know, whatever. And that's all I did. So YouTube takes fifty. Then then Nintendo takes sixty from me and I get forty. Right? Or is it the other <laughs> right. way around? No, I think I I believe, I th- I believe it, it is right Nintendo there. is get sixty, right? Let's see. Nintendo Creators Program. Um so if you go down to yeah. like the rules. The advertisement res- revenue share is 70% for channels and 60% for videos. So it's kind of vague. It doesn't really stay. Um, I mean, and that's just, you have to think so. Not only, right, are they... T- so imagine, even, if you, even if you get 40%. I mean, even if you get 40%, and, you're still only yeah. making 20 bucks. Well, and and let's go even further. And we'll, we'll go on Boogie, right? So you mentioned Boogie a few times. So Boogie is, you know, under a network. So... YouTube takes 50%. Nintendo takes their cut. Then his friggin' network takes their 40% cut. And then he gets his money. That's how YouTube works. So not only is Nintendo putting in another, you know, another dividing line from a YouTuber to, you know, from YouTube to its creators' pockets, it's you know, because partnerships kind of already created that where, but partnerships also offer a ton where they offer, you know, one-on-one support, they offer help, they offer all that crap. But if like Boogie, like you said, and and you're, you're right on that example of giving him as an example, what a great guy, free advertising. But what Nintendo is essentially saying to a guy like him is, okay, we see that YouTube takes 50, your network takes uh, 40%. We're also going to take 60. Thanks. And that's even more. So I get what you're saying, man. That's that's a really good uh, that's a really good topic to actually bring up. I actually was uh, was talking to a buddy about that the other day. So uh, this was a uh, this was a good first podcast. Number oh, one. yeah, man. I, I, I love doing this. Yeah. And, and, you know, you've had you've had your, um, you know, reasons for not streaming. And I, I'm yeah. in finals and. And just trying to graduate college finally, yeah, and it's just uh, it's it's been um, it's been super busy. So to be able to kind of break away and, and actually talk about the things we love and get back on YouTube is, is awesome. And I will will be able to uh, finally give my viewers something after two weeks to yeah. watch. So uh, I really do appreciate us getting back on again, man. It's, well, it's been nice talking. I'll, to you I'll tell you, I, I was worried. I was worried. You know, I was thinking YouTube unsubscribe me from your channel. You know, I was, I was, well, no, I was going through, uh, Twitch and I, and I saw, you know, you were following me on Twitch and I said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I went, wait a minute. I haven't seen one of their live streams in like weeks. And then I, and then I was like, don't tell me I got unsubscribed. I immediately oh. logged in and I was like, all right, I'm still subscribed. Wait, two weeks. Oh, I, you know, I was like, I appreciate, right. uh, but, I appreciate uh, you uh, being concerned. That that does mean a lot. Yeah, man. Well, we're going to get back into this. We'll try to get on a normal schedule, uh, both yep. of us, for streaming and all that. Because yep. um, I think you guys left off with, what, Fallout uh, 59? Yeah, we were playing, Number we were 59. playing some Fallout. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, we were... Um, I had gotten the um, full soundtrack. My girlfriend got it for me for my birthday, so... Nice. Um, I uh, got back into the Fallout mood yeah. again. So, what else are um, you guys? Uh, what else are you guys playing coming up for streams? Um, so, you know, a couple things we have in store. Um, you know, the the new Overwatch. Um, like, there's a lot of new things happening with Overwatch. So, um, you know, Jay really wants to play oh, that. I think you just um, missed really Uprising. Wanna... What's I think that? you missed Uprising. Overwatch Uprising. Yeah. Yeah, I think he he was able to stream one or two uh, episodes of oh, that. Oh yeah, I think I think, I, I, think um, I saw that. So, you know, it's just been it's just been really busy with both of us. But yeah. um, we we've noticed a lot of push. Are you there? I think he cut out. I think he cut out. Let's see. 
people seem to really respond to that. So, oh yeah, you just cut um, out. You just disconnected for a second or two. Oh okay. Um, You're back. Well, either way, uh, what, whatever happened, um, either way, people seem to really like the older stuff that I, I tend to play, and like people really got to kick out a little Big Planet. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. we might be might be. Uh, I think what uh, people are really actually asking for my chats with Lou and things like that. So I'm gonna oh, be yeah. trying to do some more stuff once I graduate here, and uh, um, you know, really really get the ball rolling on some on some new content. So. All right. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, All thanks right. again. Yeah. Really do appreciate it. And uh, we will catch you next week, next Thursday. Next Thursday, same time, same time. That sounds good. Um, all right. That'll be it for uh, that'll be it for the first episode. It was fun. Thanks, it was. guys.